So terrific, thank you so much. It's a, really a delight for me to be back at this uh, amazing meeting with the beautiful weather and lots of friendly faces here in the audience. And I'm looking forward to telling you over the course of the next couple of minutes about the progress we've made at SEMO over the last year since we last spoke. So just to remind you who we are, our mission as a regenerative medicine company is to make curative cell therapy a reality for diabetes. The company was founded uh, in 2015 based on work out of Professor Doug Melton's laboratory at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute. And for those of you who know uh, Professor Melton, he has two children with type 1 diabetes and has dedicated his career uh, to, to making a, a new kind of therapy possible in type 1 diabetes. And SEMA is named after those two, two children, uh, Sam and Emma. So I'll tell you a little bit over the course of this presentation about how we see the path to making that, that curative cell therapy a possibility. And our company as a whole is really very much laser focused on disease areas where there is significant unmet um, clinical need and combining two of our innovation engines within the organization to apply to those uh, areas of unmet need. The first being breakthrough cell technologies and we leverage a lot of what's been learned in the pluripotent stem cell field uh, to get there and I'll show you a little bit of the updated data on that, as well as an innovation engine on the delivery side. And we just heard in the last talk how important delivery is for cell therapies, and that's absolutely true uh, in the case of, of cell therapies for diabetes. And then mention at the end a little bit about our path to clinic and, and the team that we've been able to build in terms of both uh, people operating in the company and also investors over the last year. So I'll start just to remind you that the idea of curative cell therapies is not new. And in fact, we've had several decades of remarkable clinical experience with bone marrow transplant, which is the original of the curative cell therapies that uh, continues to this day. And that's been augmented and, and built upon in, in really remarkable ways by, by many of the people here in the audience and at this conference. Uh, we saw, of course, the, the CAR-T approvals uh, in the last couple of years. And of particular interest to us, uh, this extends into the, the diabetes field as well, where there's been really quite remarkable progress clinically with uh, organ donor-based islet transplants, the islets being the part of the pancreas that contains the insulin producing beta cells. And what we hope is to leverage all of this uh, um, work that's been done and to stand on the shoulders of these giants in the cell therapy field and move stem cell derived islets forward as the next uh, big breakthrough here in, in curative cell therapy. So to remind you uh, of the true unmet need in this space, uh, diabetes is something that affects, uh, I think, virtually all of us, uh, whether it's a family member, a friend, or neighbor, and it affects all parts of the world. And more than 50 million people uh, really require insulin injections worldwide, meaning they have an insufficient beta cell mass to control um, their metabolism. And so that's, a, that's an amazing uh, population for which uh, new therapies are desperately needed. So to remind you of the two types of diabetes that make up the majority of that uh, pool of people, uh, there's type 1, which is a disease uh, you can see on the bottom panel here, an autoimmune disease where the insulin-producing beta cells that normally reside in the islet of the pancreas are destroyed by the patient's own immune system, and that leads to complete loss of insulin production uh, by the patient's endogenous pancreas. And then type 2 diabetes, which uh, starts differently, has a different uh, etiology, but in severe cases ends in exactly the same place where we have insufficient beta cell mass to control the patient's blood sugars. And about half of the insulin uh, sold in, in, and injected into people is injected into patients with type 2 diabetes. So we think there's uh, significant opportunities in that space as well. So I mentioned, alluded to in the very first slide in that history of curative cell therapies that uh, diabetes can actually be cured, type 1 diabetes can actually be cured with an islet transplant. So over the course of the last 20 years, hundreds of patients have been treated with uh, islets isolated from organ donor pancreas where they're put back into the patient's body under immunosuppression. And we had the remarkable opportunity of uh, having one of these patients come and speak to our, our scientific team just a couple of weeks ago. 
And she had been the, in the type 1 diabetic for many years and uh, was dealing with severe hypoglycemic events on a regular basis to the extent where she was at the shopping mall with her young children, three and five year old children, and uh, passed out as a result of one of these events. And so was dealing with a, a, a relentless disease that had an impact on, on every single moment of, of her day and now has been seven years insulin independent as a result of an islet transplant to the point that she now says she, she checks her blood glucose every couple of weeks just for fun to see that it looks uh, normal. And so we're really motivated by this uh, clinical proof of concept and, and actually think it's in, in, uh, an important de-risking component of, of what we're doing at SEMA because we know if we can get the right uh, cells produced, and I'll show you some evidence that we can, and deliver them back to the patient, that we should be able to achieve this kind of uh, meaningful clinical result for a much broader population. The two things that limit the applicability of, of this clinical islet transplant to date is the limited supply, as you can imagine, with organ donor material as the starting source, and the requirement for long-term immunosuppression, which has its own sets of morbidities and risks, which uh, make the risk-benefit calculus a really difficult one for many patients. So our company has set out to solve both of those issues and, and, as I said, uh, builds on really those two technologies on the cell side and on the uh, immunoprotective uh, bioengineering side. So the company was, was built on this technology, which is here depicted just as a, as a cartoon diagram, starting from a, a cartoon red pluripotent stem cell. And this uh, pic picture here is meant to uh, simulate the type of cell fate choices that we now can control and master uh, in a manufacturing process to take that pluripotent stem cell, which has the ability both to expand indefinitely, more or less, um, but also to turn into any kind of cell type in the body. And we can really control cell fate now at each of these uh, fate decision points and turn those pluripotent stem cells into pancreatic islets, including those cells that make the, um, make the insulin for the patient. And so that's depicted at this, as this little purple um, sphere at the bottom. And then the second piece of this is how do you deliver that back to a patient? And I'll tell you just a little bit about that in, in a few slides. So the first uh, couple of slides, I'll, I'll uh, focus on the cell side and try to convince you um, of what we've been able to generate in the laboratory. And this is a cross-section of manufactured stem cell-derived islets on the left-hand side and a cross-section of natural pancreas-derived islets on the, on the right. And it's a very uh, you know, high-level picture. You can see insulin uh, expression in, in both cases and expression of other beta cell genes, and we've done single-cell RNA sequencing and lots of molecular characterization, but the take-home message is that we really are now able to make something that, for all intents and purposes, looks just like a natural pancreatic islet. More importantly for us uh, as a cell therapy company is, is how those islets actually perform. And I'll show you just one uh, set of uh, kind of potency data for us, which is a glucose-stimulated insulin secretion assay, where we're now able to produce uh, in bioreactors at our clinical manufacturing scale and with clinical materials and GMP cell lines, uh, stem cell-derived islets or SC islets that are as potent or more than those that we can isolate from, from an organ donor from a cataract cadaveric uh, pancreas. And you can see in, in this assay, the, the cells are challenged either with low glucose, which is the blue bar, or high glucose, which is the orange bar. And what you see with, uh, with normal islets is a stimulation of uh, insulin secretion. There's very high variability in, in organ donor tissue, uh, which is probably not uh, um, surprising. Uh, but you can see in the center here our current uh, production protocol, which we're bringing into the clinic uh, at large scale, where we're able to see very highly potent uh, cells uh, in the dish. And so, of course, we focused on all of the aspects over the last uh, year or two of bringing this manufacturing process to a state that it's ready to move into uh, our first clinical trial. So focusing, again, as I alluded to, on the, the raw materials side, in, including, uh, importantly, for stem cell therapies, the starting cell line, focused on the composition and purity of this process, making sure there are no residual uh, pluripotent stem cells and, and potency, as I mentioned, as well as uh, the manufacturing scale. 
So I'll just show you one picture of, of how those cells actually perform in some of our preclinical animal models. Uh, in this uh, graph, you see a series of uh, colored lines, and each of these colored lines is an individual uh, diabetic mouse. So they're induced to become diabetic um, with a drug called STZ, and the axis here is the blood glucose level. So you can see we can make these animals um, extremely diabetic very quickly, and then implant them uh, with our graft, which is those uh, manufactured islets in the dish. And what's been really exciting to see is that those uh, implanted uh, cells start to control the blood sugar of these severely diabetic animals immediately, which is consistent with their uh, mature, uh, uh, fully differentiated phenotype, and that that uh, ability to control glycemia in these animals lasts really for the duration of the lifetime of the animal. And you can see in, in this experiment out to about 200 and 250 days that if we take those cells out, whether at an intermediate time point or at a terminal time point, if we take those implanted cells out, uh, the animals quickly become uh, extremely diabetic diabetic, again, uh, confirming that the implant of the cells is responsible for that uh, efficacy phenotype. So of course, uh, in the last slide, I was showing you this uh, in vivo data just with the naked cells themselves. And there is a path that you could take into the clinic with naked cells really recapitulating the immunosuppression approach that's been done with cadaveric islets. But we're very interested in expanding the, uh, the product to a larger pool of patients uh, without immune suppression. And so we've been working on a couple of different approaches to encapsulating and protecting these cells. Uh, here depicted in this cartoon is a physical barrier where the stem cell derived islets are in the inside of a physical barrier. And uh, that barrier prevents cell-cell contact with the immune system, but has a pore sufficiently large to allow nutrients, oxygen, and insulin release in and out of that uh, bioprotected uh, membrane or biomaterial. We're also interested, as I said, in immunosuppression-based approaches and engineered cells, and have had discussions with a number of you on, uh, on that type of approach. But I'll just show you, for the sake of time today, a couple of examples of the um, encapsulation approach that we've been uh, working very hard on. Uh, this is a, a SEMA's macroencapsulation device. And what's very exciting to us is this is the same kind of uh, assay in an a, a, a small rodent model uh, induced to be diabetic and then implanted not just with the cells, but with the cells inside that immunoprotective uh, uh, encapsulation device. And you see really beautiful um, glycemic control and, and very, very high levels, actually, of, um, of secreted C peptide in those animals. And we've also been collaborating with, uh, with a couple of uh, other scientists in this field, including uh, Dr. Alice Tomei at the University of Miami, who've been developing what we think are pretty innovative um, alternative approaches to uh, encapsulating the cells. In this case, she has a uh, mechanism where she can take every individual islet and coat them with a, with a biomaterial that protects them from the immune system. And so you essentially have uh, lots of little islets that are um, uh, free-floating but uh, protected from immune destruction. And what you can see in, in her data here is the conformally coded, these uh, encapsulated stem cell derived islets we provide her are the purple line perform as well as naked cadaveric islets in this diabetic uh, animal model. And again, uh, have taken it out to, to that point of, of retrieval and demonstration that it's responsible for the, the function. So we're really excited about um, the engineering side of what we do and, and really devote about half of the company to uh, new materials and new geometries and, and, and have our favorite that we're planning to move into our first clinical trial. So speaking of clinical trials, just uh, highlight at a very high level uh, some of the ad other advantages I think uh, we have in, in, in type 1 diabetes. I think one I mentioned already, this clinical proof of concept is already established. But also the early clinical trials require very few patients and have very clear sensitive and early endpoints. These are patients who are making uh, really minuscule levels, if any, of insulin on their own. And so we have a, a, a perfect biomarker in a sense because we can measure uh, the insulin in the bloodstream of these uh, patients after receiving our product and look right away to see if we're having uh, a meaningful benefit for those, uh, uh, those patients and, and really iterate from there. Um, and we, of course, have developed, have brought in a team of people who have brought these kinds of cell therapies forward uh, before and are excited about what's happening um, with FDA and regenerative medicine advanced therapies as well. 
So I think uh, we're, we're very much set up for, for success in the sense that we are developing this off-the-shelf allogeneic product. We're in the process of developing manufacturing um, processes from the beginning that are very scalable and hopefully will be applicable to the millions of patients that could benefit in the future. And we're interested in uh, leveraging what we've learned and what we've developed in terms of know-how, both on the cell biology side as well as on the device side, to move into additional uh, both naked and encapsulated cell therapies in the future, which we'll expand on uh, in the next couple of years. So I'll just end with a, with a slide or two on our, on our uh, leadership team. So we have a, a new CEO joined us about four months ago, Bastiano Sano, who comes from uh, uh, Novartis and uh, Magenta Therapeutics, has been working on developing uh, cell therapies in a variety of spaces uh, very successfully. We're, we're really glad to have, uh, have him join, as well as Dave DeGusto, uh, who many of you may know, has uh, joined as chief technical officer responsible for our manufacturing and, and really uh, couldn't ask for for, for better experience in this very complicated uh, cell therapy manufacturing space, and we'll have additional uh, announcements of, of really exciting new people joining our team uh, very soon. And I'll just end with uh, our expanded uh, board and group of investors, and we really couldn't do what we are doing and have done without them, and I'm really pleased to, to share that we've now raised uh, over $150 million in, in capital, including a $110 million Series B uh, uh, late last year, and so brought on board um, additional investors, including Eight Roads, Eight Roads and Cowan, and are really uh, delighted that they share our, our vision and mission for, for curing diabetes. So thank you.